welcome back and the small signal analysis. Now, what about the frequency response? We already have a hint regarding the frequency response. We have already seen that the CDB is going to play a role in the frequency response. So, how do we calculate, you know, uh, uh, in a comprehensive manner, how do we do the more comprehensive frequency response analysis? We are just going to discuss some shortcut which is going to be uh, very handy in doing frequency response analysis for more complicated circuits. So, all of you. Uh, definitely might have come across the frequency response of simple circuits like common source amplifiers uh, and for many of you it may be redundant, but definitely uh, as we have said we have to cater to uh, people even working in digital domain and uh, for them it is important that we have the uh, basics being covered before going to the uh, system level design. So, let me talk about uh, common source amplifier frequency response. So, for that once again all we need to do is add the high frequency capacitances to the small signal model. So, I will redraw whatever I had earlier the same model, but with added small signal capacitances. So, what are the capacitances? Let me mark the terminals G, you know, D, and S. Right? And assuming that body is grounded, uh, so you will have CGS, CGD, CDB, and CSB. Now, B we are assuming that B is grounded, S is also grounded. So, C S B is not considered only C D B. Now, here we have the overall circuit, we can find out the you can, uh, first you know uh, crude or you know more complicated way of solving this question is to find out the uh, differential equation solution, write down the differential equation uh, in time domain at this node and this node that becomes a coupled differential equation, we can solve those to find the uh, uh, solution of the time domain signal. But in general it is much more convenient to do frequency domain analysis, where we replace each of these uh, capacitances with their complex impedance, which is going to be 1 upon S C G D, where S denotes 1 upon iota omega. So, in general in network theory, if you are having any uh, capacitance or inductances, you can replace them by the corresponding complex impedances denoted by 1 upon S C G D in case of uh, capacitance and then the rest of the analysis is just like KCL or KVL analysis. right? So, here we can solve for these two node voltages unknown node voltages. right? So, here if I add another complication suppose if I put another source resistance R signal in general a source will have some non-zero resistance, non-zero impedance suppose it is R signal. So, in that case even the V g is not known to me, if I do not have R signal then V g is equal to V signal or V g s, but in this case V uh, the V g is not equal to V in if I have a R signal. So, V g becomes an unknown likewise V d is another unknown. So, my uh, intention is to find out V d upon V in. So, I have two unknown voltages V d and V g. I can proceed with you know common analysis, I can write down the KCL at this equation, this node and the second node, I can solve those in terms of this complex impedances and I can get a uh, overall transfer function. For example, uh, you know at this node if I write down the expression for KCL V g times the impedance of this capacitor S C G S plus V g minus V in upon R signal plus V g minus V d into S C G d equal to 0. This is the overall KCL currents going out of this node V g into these three branches summed equal to 0. Likewise, I can write down the equation at the drain node. So, I can write down uh, V d upon R o plus V d upon R d plus V d 
upon the impedance of this capacitor which is 1 upon S C D B. So, we get V D times S C D B plus G M V G S which is once again V G minus 0 and then the last component which is V D minus V G upon 1 upon S C G D. So, S C G D this is the second equation and here we have two unknowns V G and V D two equations we can solve them and find out the exact expression for V D as a function of V in. So, we expect it is going to be you know uh, some polynomial in S may be A naught plus A 1 S plus A 2 S square second order because you have two capacitances likewise B naught plus B 1 S plus B 2 S square something of this sort this is a generic expression I can you know further factor it into uh, a more friendly expression 1 plus s upon of course, there is going to be some constant term. So, there can be some constant term also. So, we can factor it into the constituent uh, linear terms 1 upon s plus p 1, 1 upon s plus p 2, 1 plus s upon z 1, 1 plus s upon z 2. So, this is the you know general way you know most common way of finding out uh, uh, overall overall uh, voltage gain is so a small signal gain in terms of the frequency dependent parameters, where p 1 z 1 they are called poles and zeros, poles and zeros which are dependent upon the r c time constant seen in the circuit right. So, in general this p 1 and c 1 they will depend upon 1 upon r equivalent c equivalent the r c time constant in the circuit. So, this method is of course, a lot more cumbersome whenever we are trying to do this direct analysis it can be very cumbersome especially if you go for more and more complicated circuits we are having more and more nodes with more unknown voltages it will become more and more number of equations and we cannot do hand calculation based on that. A circuit simulator can do it it is a running on a powerful computer it can run many different solutions and find out the overall solution exact solution and exact frequency response. But for hand calculation for doing quick analysis we use some tricks we use some approximations we can which can give us uh, approximately good results fairly reasonably correct results. So, that we can get started with the design. So, rather than going through this more complicated step we go for uh, an, an approximation. So, one of the key steps involved in that approximation and most of you might be aware of that is dealing with the Miller effect. So, all we need to do is need to get rid of the capacitances connecting two different nodes and reduce them to capacitances connected between those nodes and AC ground. So, here the C G S is between the gate and AC ground, C D B is between the drain and AC ground, but C G D is appearing between two nodes of the circuit and that is leading to coupling between these two equations. If C G D were absent then the equation of the first node is solvable independently and based on that V G I can solve once again the V G G M V G S and get the V D independently. So, that decouples the two nodes I can proceed step by step and find out all the signal uh, without doing this coupled solutions. So, that is the main motivation behind using Miller theorem to decouple or disconnect the small signal parasitic capacitances connecting two circuit nodes and represent them by equivalent capacitances connected between the, those particular nodes and AC ground. So, what, what I would like to do is I would like to get rid of this C G D and represent this as an equivalent capacitance between this node and AC ground and likewise between the other node and AC ground this is what we would like to do and Miller effects comes handy that is what we are going to use for do, doing this simplification. So, without going into the proof of Miller effect which can be done in two lines but I am just avoiding that. Miller effect says that you know if you are having uh, two nodes in the circuit suppose you are having some connections over here some blocks. So, I am just uh, drawing two nodes node A and you know node B another two nodes these are also connected to some other branches I am not drawing node B and you have Z A B connected over here. If I am talking about the small signal you are having some relationship between the voltages at A and B the small signal voltage gain at B as compared to A is suppose uh, you know K. So, V B is equal to K times V A. Let us let me make it more clear. So, uh, the small signal 
at B is k times V A. So, there is a voltage gain from the node A to node B and under those conditions we can decompose this Z A B into an equivalent Z A connected between the node A and ground and likewise equivalent Z B connected between the node B and ground. And the way we prove the values, we derive the values is just by equating the KCL. The KCL at node A should remain same as the KCL in this case. And it can be shown that the ZA is going to be equal to ZAB upon 1 minus A. Likewise, ZB is going to be ZAB upon 1 minus 1 upon A. So, if we apply this sorry k. So, I have used the term k. So, it is really k that is the voltage gain from A to B. So, if I apply the same concept in this particular circuit that we have just arrived at, we can take an approximation. We can say that the low frequency gain from gate to drain, mind it, it is a low frequency gain. Ignoring the effect of capacitances, the low frequency gain between the gate and the drain we know it is going to be equal to G m R o parallel R d approximately equal to G m R d that is what we have done. We just uh, read it in the last slide. So, the low frequency gain is just G m times R d minus sign and therefore, the equivalent capacitance if I look at their impedance that is 1 upon uh, you know S c. So, by this analogy the equivalent capacitance becomes multiplied by C if I have to find out C G that gets multiplied by C G D 1 minus A that is minus times G M R D and likewise uh, this is the C G dash which I am putting here. So, I am calling this at C G dash which is the blue capacitor equivalent capacitor obtained by splitting this C G D into a capacitor between gate and A C ground that is C G dash and that C G dash is just going to be C G D times 1 plus G M R D and likewise if I call this the other blue capacitor C D dash which is obtained by decomposing C G D dash into an equivalent capacitor between drain and A C ground then this becomes C D dash is equal to C G D times 1 minus 1 upon A so basically 1 upon G M R D if I assume that G M R D is much much greater than 1, then it is approximately equal to C G D only. So, basically what I can do is I can simplify this circuit. Now, my new simplified uh, signal small signal is having C G S, it is having C G dash which I obtain by breaking the C G D. I am having G M V G S. Likewise, I am having the R O and R D and on this side I have C D dash which I have just arrived at by breaking the C G D once again and I also have C D B. Now, these two capacitances C G S and C G D C G dash can be combined together likewise the other capacitance can be combined together into a single capacitance because they are appearing between this node and AC ground and I can arrive at a resulting simplified model for my frequency response. So, I can call it C G which is equal to C G S plus C G dash this is R O parallel R D and on the other side I have C D which is once again sorry C D which is once again C D dash plus C D B. So, this is a much simplified model I have decoupled nodes. So, now I have decoupled my V g and I have decoupled my 
you know v d. And then the equation for v g and v d becomes very simple, I can just express v g as v in times the impedance of this capacitance that is 1 upon s c g upon r signal plus 1 upon s c g that is just voltage division. This is the impedance of the capacitor, impedance of the resistor, R signal and this is the V g as a function of V in. We have simplified further V in upon 1 plus R signal times S c g. So, here we see that we are getting a kind of low frequency pole of the uh, order V in times 1 upon 1 plus s upon p 1 right. So, where p 1 can be written as 1 upon c g r signal which is 1 upon c equivalent 1 upon times 1 upon r equivalent. So, if I go towards lower frequency the c g is almost open circuited because 1 upon omega c g is very large. In that case, there is hardly any voltage division entire V signal appears at V g that is what this equation is telling me s tending to 0 V g equal to V in. Whereas, if you go for higher and higher frequency the impedance of this parasitic capacitance c g reduces and as a result the V g is going to fall and that is also given over here the s increases as a result you can when s becomes much larger than p you are having a uh, gain decreasing with s that is the magnitude of the gain is decreasing with omega. As a result you get a fall in the overall gain after you hit omega equal to p. So, and what is the slope if I plot it in, in the log domain if uh, once I am having omega much greater than p 1 then the transfer function v g upon v in is approximated as v in divided by s upon p 1 because we can ignore this 1 with respect to s upon p 1. And then this means that once I am at omega much greater than p 1 my magnitude of this gain which is mod a v v in upon omega times p 1 is going to reduce proportional to omega. So, if I go for uh, 10x increase in omega my gain is going to go down by 10x. In terms of dB I can say if I in this region if I increase omega by 10x if I am going from omega 1 to 10 omega 1 my gain will drop by factor of 10 in dB it is 20. So, I can say this will be a drop of 20 dB and therefore, I get a 20 dB per decade drop in the uh, mod A v on the x axis we have omega y axis mod a v. So, if I just consider this transfer function it says that after you hit omega equal to p 1 you are going to get a 20 dB per decade drop. Likewise, if I go for the output pole once again I can once I have the expression for v in I can find out the expression for v d which is just g m v g s with a minus sign multiplied by the total z that is seen over here. So, earlier we had only g m v g s times r o parallel r d, but now we have g m v g s times r o parallel r d parallel the impedance of this capacitor which is 1 upon s c d. So, if I ignore r o and I say this is just approximately equal to r d then basically once again I have uh, an expression which is r d parallel 1 upon s c d which is something like g m v g s r d upon 1 plus s r uh, c d times r d. So, once again if I look at the first term over here the denominator the numerator tells me uh, the voltage gain is minus g m r d provided your s is very small. So, for very small omega once again the term over here can be ignored with respect to 1. Whereas, uh, in that case my overall gain is just minus g m times r d, but if I am going for larger and larger omega once again this starts dominating and once again you have the 1 upon s relationship coming. So, once again I can write this as minus g m v g s r d upon 1 plus s upon p 2 
where P2 is the pole given by 1 upon CD times RD. So, this is uh, once again I can combine this VGS expression that we obtained earlier. So, VGS as a function of V in we have already obtained. So, if I combine this equation 1 and equation 2, I can write down 1 plus 2 will give me Vg or Vd upon V in that we are interested in. So, first equation gave me Vg as a function of V in, second equation gave me Vd as a function of Vg. Combining this, I can just eliminate this Vg by putting Vg as a function of V in and therefore, I get minus Gm Rd into 1 upon 1 plus S upon P1 times 1 upon 1 plus S upon P2. So, what we say is that in this transfer function, the Gm Rd terms is a low frequency term which will come when you ignore the effect of this high frequency parasitic capacitances. But once you include the effect of this parasitic capacitances, then you have these two frequency domain frequency dependent terms coming into picture which say that at higher frequency the gain is going to drop. And from this curve, from this you know expression we can find out what is going to be the shape of this transfer characteristics mod A V with respect to omega. So, in general if we carefully see what we have done in doing this simplification, we can observe a circuit and all we have to do is find out the low frequency gain. So, first term is the low frequency gain and then find out what are the poles, what are the high frequency poles or the RC time constants associated with different nodes. So, these are the poles and corresponding to that we are having the uh, RC time constants associated with the two circuit nodes. So, at these two node voltages in the circuit we have found out the RC time constants corresponding to the equivalent R and equivalent C. So, this is the step we are going to repeat for analysis or frequency analysis for more complicated circuits. Find out the low frequency gain and then find out the RC time constant at different circuit nodes. That is find out the small signal equivalent resistance, call it 1 upon R 2 equivalent and find out the small signal equivalent capacitance C 2 equivalent. What is R 2 equivalent? That is the small signal resistance between that particular node and AC ground. So, at this drain terminal if you see what is the small signal resistance between drain and AC ground that is just RO parallel RD. Likewise, what is the C2 equivalent that is the small signal resistance seen between the drain and the AC ground that is just CD. That gives me the R equivalent C equivalent corresponding to the pole arising at the drain terminal. Same thing applies at the gate. So, at the gate terminal if I see the small signal equivalent capacitance between this gate terminal and AC ground is Cg and small signal resistance at this node between this node and AC ground this is R signal because V signal once we have taken out R signal out of it this becomes an ideal source it does not have any resistance. So, this represents the internal resistance of the source. So, the equivalent small signal resistance between this point and AC ground is just R signal the equivalent small signal capacitance between this node and AC ground is R signal uh, Cg and therefore, 1 upon Cg times R signal gives us the pole the P1 and once we have this low frequency gain minus Gm Rd and we have these two poles, we have the frequency dependent transfer function of the amplifier ready. From there we can do more detailed analysis, we can find out the transfer curve for the magnitude and phase response of this circuits. Alright, so, uh, we are, so uh, once we have this AC analysis done, the last, uh, so we have done DC analysis, we have done the small signal analysis and finally, we have done the frequency response. We will go into a little bit more detail of the frequency response, but just to complete the story, we are also going to look into very quickly the noise analysis that we have just discussed and how to, you know, link it with the circuit analysis. So, for doing the noise analysis, once again, we are going to look into the a small signal model and trying to see how to incorporate the noise signal at the MOSFET device. So, if I directly draw the circuit, we have RD and the MOSFET which is going to have its own noise. I can represent the noise source of the MOSFET as 
of the uh, RD as equivalent current source that is what we have seen. So, that is 4 k t upon r this is the i n square f that is the mean square noise spectral density of the RED. Likewise, I know I have a channel current noise for the MOSFET. I can call it I n square channel of the MOSFET, which is equal to 4 k t gamma g m. And I also have the 1 upon f noise of the MOSFET coming in series with the gate, which is we know k upon f w l c o x. Now, if I want to find out only the effect of these noise sources, I can set the input source to 0. I can set the input source to 0. I do not apply any external signal. I just want to find out because of these noise sources within the resistor and within the MOSFET, what is going to be my output noise voltage v, v o n square that is the mean square output noise voltage. So, I can directly do the analysis here as well without going to the small signal model, but it will be more convenient more clear if I go to the small signal model. So, I am drawing the v n square g at the gate that is corresponding to the 1 upon f noise. I am drawing the i n square channel which is 4 k t gamma g m. Uh, we are also having the R D which is going to give you another noise source right. So, this is 4 k t bar R, this is the gate terminal source is grounded and we want to find out what is the V o n square. Remember these are noise square current square. So, we have basically first of all two current sources over here 4 k t by r you have the channel current noise 4 k t gamma g m and we also have the transconductance term which is going to convert this v n square g into another channel current which is going to come because of the g m term g m square v n g square. So, remember we have to deal with g m square because this is v n g square multiplied by g m square it will give you the effective noise current in the channel. So, Based on this, it is easy to see, means we have to just look at the square terms, we do not have to worry about the polarity of each of these current sources. So, this is the current which is coming between the drain and the AC ground. Remember, this is VDD, so from the point of view of small signal, it is AC ground, so we can ground it. So, this 4 k t upon r is coming between the drain and the source. This I n square channel 4 k t gamma g m again coming between drain and the AC ground. So, I n square channel coming between drain and the AC ground, R D as usual between drain and AC ground because this is drain and AC ground and likewise the G m square term which is going to convert this noise gate voltage V n g square. So, V n g square multiplied by G m square gives you G m square V n g square as a drain to source current. So, the current noise current. So, these are three currents that are coming in parallel and all I need to do is sum them up and multiply with R d square because these are current square and we need to add up the mean square values of this current. So, basically what I have to do is output V o n square is going to be equal to 4 k t upon R plus 4 k t gamma g m plus g m square k upon f w l c o x times R d square that is all. And now, what we have seen is it is uh, convenient to represent the noise as an input referred noise. So, this is the output noise voltage V o n square that we are calculating, how to refer it to the input, what is the equivalent input noise at the gate which captures this entire output noise. So, input referred noise can be written as V o n square divided by a square or A v square where A v is the magnitude of the gain. What is the magnitude of the gain? At low frequency if I assume the low frequency behavior A v is g m 
R D. Therefore, A V square is G M you know, R D square, right? So then I divide the whole thing by G M R D square, and therefore R D square gets cancelled, and V I N square will be four K T upon G M times R D plus uh, G M square times R D times four K T gamma upon G M plus k upon f w l c o x that is the input referred noise v in square and we see some interesting results we see that the input referred noise is inversely proportional to r d we would expect that if r d is large its uh, 4 k t r noise voltage will be large but here we say that input referred noise is lowered if we increase r d why once again the same phenomena because larger rd also amplifies the input signal going to the output so although it is producing some noise but it is also amplifying the signal so that as compared to the as compared to the input referred noise over here uh, you know the signal strength will be increased so if i talk about the signal strength at the output that will be amplified because of rd therefore the noise or the signal to noise ratio that is getting improved if you are having larger rd Likewise, we see that there is a strong dependence on GM. So, if you are increasing GM, the first two stages definitely, first two terms definitely tell us larger GM means lar uh, smaller input referred noise. So, having a larger GM for the input device, which can be obtained either by increasing ID or it can be obtained by increasing W by L. So, W by L or larger ID will help me in reducing the first two terms. Likewise, the second term larger W as well as L will help me reducing the 1 upon F term which is very significant for low frequency operations. So, we see that you have to reduce the 1 upon F noise that is going to be you know uh, uh, taken care by choosing larger W and L. But once again remember if you are choosing larger W and L what is the issue? We know that larger W and L means lot of parasitic capacitances all the capacitances that we have discussed will scale up that will make your circuit smaller, uh, slower, parasitic poles will become lower and therefore your frequency response uh, the lower cutoff uh, the, uh, the higher cutoff frequency will be lowered bandwidth of the circuit will be limited. So, if you are trying to reduce the input referred noise it can you know ultimately trade off with your uh, area as well as the bandwidth or the speed of the circuit. Likewise, if you are relying on GM to increase your uh, uh, signal or reduce your noise once again larger gm means either larger w by l or larger id so either it can you know increase your power consumption because of larger id or once again if you are choosing larger w by l it can increase your capacitances and hence the circuit can become slower so there are a lot of pros and cons the moment you try to fix one parameter try to adjust the noise it trades off with your gain it can trade off with your power consumption it can you know trade off with your linearity that we have not discussed in so much detail. So, this is the you know, step we are going to follow for uh, rest of the circuits and you know just to complete this discussion if I plot this you know transfer characteristics if I try to see there are two terms one is the 1 upon f dependent term and other two terms are constant terms. So, the frequency at which this 1 upon f term becomes constant to becomes equal to this constant term is generally referred to as 1 upon f corner frequency of the circuit. So, if this is your V n square and at this f the contribution of this 1 upon f term is becoming equal to the contribution of this constant term that is called the 1 upon f corner frequency. Beyond this point the 1 upon f noise is picking up its contribution is increasing steeply above this point above this frequency the white noise term the frequency independent term that is more prominent. So, uh, in case your signal is in this region that is below 1 upon f definitely it will get corrupted by very large noise in this region. So, we need to take care of that. So, corner frequency happens to be another very important concern while doing noise analysis in circuits. So, this is the analysis we are going to follow this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, scheme overall starting from DC analysis, DC biasing point going to small signal low frequency analysis, frequency response, transfer characteristics, the uh, you know uh, magnitude and phase response and finally, the noise analysis. So, these are the four basic tools we are going to repeatedly use in 
designing more complicated building blocks for our analog front end. So, we will start our discussion on the uh, front end amplifier, we'll start with the building blocks, the differential amplifier with active load, we will also look into current mirrors and then finally develop the entire scheme with appropriate DC biasing, with optimization of noise, with op optimization of uh, you know bandwidth and looking at the complete picture and then we will use that front end amplifier uh, with some other signal processing schemes to take care of some of the critical issues like this one upon f noise especially in case we are dealing with very low frequency signals. So, that is that is uh, going to be covered tomorrow and hopefully we will be um, completing uh, the analysis of a front end amplifier based on the material that we have prepared today. So, thanks a lot. Uh,